The sixth presentation for today is from Mr. Tatsuya Kikuchi and Ms. Natsuko Kikuchi. Please start. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are Tatsuya and Natsuko Kikuchi, coming from DGS, Digital Grid Solutions. We are operating Washa, which is a service providing electricity to the non-electrified regions in Africa. We started this service last year from Tanzania and now trying to expand it. Today, we are looking for business partners who would support us. Before introducing our service, let me ask you a question. Can you imagine your life without electricity? Well, let's think about what we have around us. Traffic lights, escalators, vending machines, computers, radios, even the smartphones in your pockets are all operated using electricity. Today, electricity has become essential to our lives, just as water and food are. However, though it may be surprising, 18% of people throughout the world still do not have access to electricity. Specifying it to the sub-Saharan area of Africa, the non-electrification rate is as high as 68%, and this is 600 million people. At night, when they do not have sunshine, people make light with the kerosene lamps, which are not bright enough and even toxic to human body. In addition, people walk for more than two hours to nearby towns just to get their mobile phones charged. Oh, some of you might not know, but 70 to 80% of people in Africa own mobile phones, even though they do not have plugs in their houses. Of course, many solutions were brought up in order to solve this issue. However, most of them ended up unsuccessfully. This is because of the two fundamental problems the non-electrified regions have the low affordability, and the demand in remote areas. The average income of people in Tanzania is as low as $50 a month. Therefore, they cannot afford to build great power-generating facilities, such as the solar home system. The fact that the electricity demands are in remote areas is also a cause. In rural areas, villages are dotted around the country, and in each of them, there are only a few hundred people living. Therefore, it is too inefficient to introduce power grids to each of the villages. Due to these two factors, the previous solutions lacked profitability. And the lack of profitability directly led to unsustainability. So, we DJGS came up with a completely new service, and we call this... Washa! Washa. In Washa, we take notice of the local kiosks. Kiosks are small stores selling daily necessities, and it can be seen in every village. So our service works upon their cooperation. And this is how it works. First of all, DGS would prepare several items, including a solar panel, a charger box with a smartphone as a controller, and an LED lantern. We would lend these to local kiosks for free. The initial investment would all be covered by us, DGS. Local kiosks can generate electricity using the solar panel and provide them to customers, who would be their local residents. Customers would pay money in exchange and the sales profit would be shared by kiosk owners and DGS. So what does it mean by providing electricity? Well, Washa has two main services, the charging service and rental service. Customers can bring their mobile phones and charge them at kiosks, or borrow some electronic appliances, such as the LED lanterns from them. So. This is the LED lantern. Nice orange, and it's quite bright, isn't it? Of course, you can use it as a torch, but if you hang it from the ceiling, 
it becomes a room lamp. What's more is that you can also charge your mobile phone by connecting it using the cable, like this. So it can be used for various purposes. And this is how Washer works. The whole system would be supervised by DGS Online. By the way, how could Washer overcome the two fundamental problems the previous solutions couldn't? Well, the key point of our service is the combination of our latest technology and ICT, Internet Communication Technology. This is the charger box we've invented. It can separate the generated electricity into small units. And this is our company's latest technology. Customers can purchase electricity just the amount they want. For example, if they pay 250 Tanzanian shillings, they can have their mobile phones half charged. If they pay 500 Tanzanian shillings, they can have their mobile phones fully charged. Customers can purchase electricity with the minimum amount of spending. Therefore, even people with low affordability can purchase it. Another point of this service is that the whole system is managed online using ICT. All payments between DGS and kiosk owners would be done by mobile money. Since many people in Africa do not own bank accounts, this is, a, this is a good way to make sure that DGS would be paid for its service. In addition, all sales management and customer management would be done online. For example, the, no the amount of electricity generated, the number of LED lanterns rented out, the number of mobile phones charged, and so on. Therefore, even if the kiosks are located in remote areas, DGS can supervise them and check if they are working well. Again, Washa managed to overcome the two fundamental problems in the non-electrified regions. By combining our latest technology and ICT, Washa became both a profitable and a sustainable solution. In fact, we have figured out that with 500 kiosks, we can get enough profit. Last year, when we started this service, we only had nine. But in a year, we have expanded up to 200. By the end of next year, we are aiming to have as much as 1,000 kiosks. The introduction of Washa has already affected many people's lifestyle. The LED lantern is now encouraging children to study. As you can see, they can study under a brighter light, and the lanterns are no longer toxic to their body, too. Also, kiosks can be open until late at night. Thanks to this, some owners even say that their sales have tripled. Now, at this point, Washa is a service providing electricity only for daily use. However, lighting up houses is not our final goal we are aiming to expand it to other fields. Education, agriculture, medical care. Washa can collaborate with anything. Its contribution is unlimited. Anyone interested, please join us. We are looking for business partners who would support or collaborate with us. Have a look at this picture. You can see that there are still many areas in darkness. With your help, this can be changed. Let us light up not only the darkness, but also the future of people in darkness with Washa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kikuchi, Ms. Kikuchi. Now we'll go to the judges for questions. Uh, very impressive. I want to invest. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to collaborate with you. Thank you. However, I want to know the more in detail regarding the feasibility or economic point of views. How much I should pay for you? And to what extent can I get the return? Uh, 
Okay, so as I mentioned in the later part of the presentation, we are not just lighting up houses, but in the future, we are going to try to, like, to expand our service to like, education, agriculture, medical care, and so on. So th this would be, like, for example, for education, we are planning to make like, educational contents on tablet PCs so that even in the rural areas, people can get some high level of education. So like, I am expecting people to invest on us onto the future plans of our service in Russia. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Second judge, please. All right. I, I also have a financial question, but mine's at the other end of the process. Mm -hmm. You said that uh, money will be transferred from the kiosks to GDS uh, electronically, uh, but you also mentioned that most of the ultimate consumers don't have bank accounts, so I assume they would be paying cash to the kiosks. So my question is, uh, who sets the rates that the kiosks charge? Do you decide that, or does the kiosk decide that, and what is the basis of that decision? Okay, thank you for your question. Well, um, how much customers should pay is um, decided by us. Um, actually, the price of lending, lending a lantern is 500 Tanzanian shillings, which is about 30 yen in Japanese yen. So. Um, um, compared to using kerosene lamps or other kinds of lamps they use, it is way more economical. And I, th um, I think it would be easy for um, villagers or people to afford for it. Oh, thanks. That's a very detailed response. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, judges, for your questions. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, um, from the lady in the middle. Thank you very much for the great presentation. Um, my name is Nina Lili. I'm from Maui Yamagaki University. Um, I, I wanted to ask about the um, internet, the cash. Um, um, I'm afraid that in, in Africa, the internet is still not really um, great service right now. So I'm afraid the mobile cash won't work well. Um, what do you think about that? Well, actually, most people in Africa already most had mobile phones. And so in terms of internet, the, actually the, line, the internet service is already quite well compared to the electricity, actually. So like, we are actually using like, the current service, which is the mobile money, which is already working for like, a few decades. So in terms of internet, I think there's no problem. Um, adding to it, um, just as we washer are going to have many kiosks cooperating with us, in many villages of Tanzania, there are all, already like stations for mobile money, which people use. So um, we are thinking that they can use those kind of things too. Thank you. Is there another question from the audience? Okay, we have a person over here. There's a lady over here. Oh, thank you for your great presentation. It was really interesting, and I think it's so reasonable. And my name is Yui Moitaki from Asia Pacific University, from Oita. And I have a question about medi medical care, per the in terms of medical care, if you have any concrete ideas, I would like to hear that. Thank you. Um, thank you for asking. Well. Um, in many villages of Tanzania or Africa, um, the villages, each of the villages are really small. So as you say, um, there are not good doctors in each village or not big hospitals. So we are thinking about using our technology, um, dividing the technology of dividing electricity and ICT to use it for remote medical cares. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kikuchi and Ms. Kikuchi, for an excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.